you first take a look at the new Sitecore 9 dashboard, you're going to notice a new icon is now available for Sitecore Forms. This is now available as part of the platform out of the box, not a separate module like WFFM. Here, we can see a listing of all the forms in the system and create new ones from templates. In this case, I've only got the one template, and I'm going to create a new blank form. At this point, we can now see the editing area, Canvas. And this on the left side is going to allow us to drag elements on. I can get more area by toggling off the sidebar. And on that right side is our toolbox. The toolbox has all the elements that we're going to need to be able to build up our form. Things like text fields, email fields, lists, or password fields, but also structural elements like pages and submit buttons. From this sidebar, we can also take a look at things like the settings for the form, as well as performance metrics for this particular form. What we're going to do now is walk through designing a particular form that we're going to ask for some feedback. The first thing I want to do is get some information about the user, but I need to tell them a little bit about this form. So I'm going to drag a text element on. This allows me to put in things like instructions or titles something to guide the user in what they're going to do. When I select the element, notice that the right toolbar updates contextually to now show me information about that selected element. I can do things like change up what the text is that's in there, but I can also do some basic styling, like what kind of HTML tag do I want to wrap this in? Beyond that, if I want to get more advanced, I can start adding some CSS classes, and that'll allow me to have a little bit more control over the look. Now at this point, I've just realized that I didn't want to do this with my layout and I wanted to have a section here on the page to group my fields together. So I can grab my structural element, grab the section and drag it onto the form. Notice that it shows me where I can go and put that section on. At this point, I can also take the title I had previously added to the page and move it to inside the section. This is just to show you how easy it is to rearrange your form and edit as you're going along. Now at this point we're going to start grabbing that information from the user. Things like getting their name. A simple single line input text field allows me to give them some placeholder text and a label to give them instructions about what I want to gather. But I can also set up some validation. In this case, I want to do a mandatory field on this so that it forces them to provide me with their name. I could do advanced styling or choose how I want to do performance tracking as well. The next thing I want is to be able to identify them uniquely. So I'm going to gather their email address. I'm going to take that email, drop it on, and this is very similar to the single line input. I can do things like a label and placeholder text, but there's a small little difference when we get to validation. In the validation, we now have an option for an email validator which will check that the text input by the user is valid as an email address. I can still set it as mandatory, have the same styling and advanced settings as with other fields. From here, we're going to take a look at the new functionality in Cycle Reforms, which supports multiple pages. This is great for things like surveys, or if you just want to have a UX where you can drive users through smaller parts of your form so they can only drive a little bit of information at a time. Here, I've added in a new page, and I can start asking for some feedback. I'm going to do things like let them provide a subject about their feedback, and also use a multi-line text to let them put in some comments. Using different types of fields allows you to tell the user how much information you're expecting from them. So a single line might be if you just want a short piece of information, but a multi-line lets the user know that you're expecting a little bit more from them. Now that we have our form done, we need to get our data. And that's where we get into submit buttons. When we add a submit button to the page, now that we have multi-page support, we actually need to do multiple types of buttons. So it might be about adding the data into the database, but it could also be used for going back and forth. So like with others, I can set up the label, which will change the text on the button, but I choose a navigation step. Next previous, if I'm wanting to do paging, or submit, in this case, I want to gather the data. 
Once we want to have the data submitted, we can choose what actions we want to do. Psychoforms comes with some out of the box, but you can add your own custom to this list as well. I'm going to choose the Save Data option. That's going to let the data go into the Experience Forms database. I also want to trigger a goal because I'm going to want to do some marketing after this. In my case, I'm going to load, it's going to load up goals that are in the system, and I'm going to choose the Instant Demo Goal. Now that I've got my items assigned, I can choose what order they're going to happen in so that I can make sure that the data is being synchronized in a certain order. This is helpful if you have your own custom actions that might be talking to certain systems and you're waiting for responses before proceeding. At this point, we're all done. We can save our form and make it available to authors to add to their pages. Once the item has been saved, we can now go and view this form in the listing page. When we return back to the listing page, our form is displayed, and we can see on the right toolbar information about that form. So as we build up our list, we can easily look at performance metrics across the system by going through this list. Thank you very much. Hope you have a great day.